Hello everyone, I'm Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what happens when you eject a narcissist. If that sounds good to you, please hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. When you reject a narcissist, when you reject a narcissist, you are challenging their superiority, which will cause a narcissistic injury, and it will make them very angry, to where they will then react with punishment and denial, because rejection is one of their core wounds. So if you reject a narcissist, it will trigger them and it will even cause them to react in a certain way. As empaths, we are intuitive, sensitive, and good listeners. We take other people's feelings, needs, and situation into consideration. So we rarely reject anyone. And we actually feel really bad if we ever do have to reject someone. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, they will push you into a state where you're not able to deal with a problem or difficult situation any longer. They will drive you over the edge to where you completely lose control. Until you realize that there isn't going to be any progression in this situation and you're not going to be able to resolve anything. Because narcissists are maladaptive. They believe that they are entitled to take advantage of people which is why they will try to manipulate and control those around them. Until you realize that you have to end the relationship and put boundaries in place to protect yourself. The narcissist experienced trauma in their childhood as a result of abuse and neglect. They felt they weren't good enough. So they abandoned their true self and constructed a false self, which is meant to be perfect which means that they became disconnected from themselves and their emotions and they no longer felt anything. Because it's how they learned to be in their childhood. They learned that if they feel rejected, it means they're not good enough. But they couldn't deal with the shame. So they split off that vulnerable side of them. They dissociate from it and instead they're egotistical and they view themselves as being superior. Their mentality is that if you don't accept them, then something must be wrong with you. They must be better than you in some way. It's denial because they can't deal with the shame. They can't deal with the feeling of not being enough. So they refuse to see the reality of the situation and instead they detach from it. Because in their childhood, they likely had no one to talk to about it. So they learn to deny and suppress it in order to cope with these situations. But it's still a core wound because it's something they've never reflected on. Which is why when you reject the narcissist, it will trigger them and they will feel abandoned, abandoned by you. Because they're unable to understand that their own behavior has caused you to, re to reject them. They have an external locus of control. So they blame external forces for their own circumstances, as opposed to an internal locus of control, which is when people believe that they are in control and take responsibility for their own actions. Narcissists do not believe they have control over events that impacts their lives. And that is why they are unlikely to work towards change. They frequently feel hopeless and powerless in the face of difficult situations but they don't believe they can change their situation through their own efforts. So they're not going to internalize it and think that maybe they've upset you or that they've contributed to their situation or that they need to make things right. That's how normal people think. And narcissists are the opposite of anything normal. So they're not going to try to understand it. When you reject a narcissist, it bruises their ego. It makes them feel less valuable and important, which is difficult for them to understand. 
So they're going to be in denial. And they're going to be resentful, arrogant, and entitled because they're battling the shame. And they're trying to regain their sense of their false self and their superiority, which they can only achieve by blaming you. Because it's the only way they can regain control of the situation. They're not consciously aware of their triggers or of how they may be responding to the rejection. Which is why you can't sit down and have a conversation with them about it. Because they're just going to project it all onto you. They're going to see you as the problem. As though you did something to them. Because in their minds you fail to obey their rules and commands and their authority. Because they view you as an extension of themselves. As their possession. As this thing that belongs to them. And yet, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So they're going to project their insecurities onto you. And they're going to put all of the blame onto you. Because when you're not doing what they want you to do, they have to believe that you're deserving of contempt and ill treatment. So that they can regain their sense of their false self and their superiority. Which means that they will seek revenge. Because they believe that you have disobeyed them. And that you have made them feel bad about themselves. When they are the one who is meant to be in control. So you filed their plans. You've spoiled their orchestration. Because it didn't go their way. So now they're really angry. Which is a very intense reaction to the rejection. And it makes them feel very uncomfortable. So in order to regain a sense of comfort. They will seek revenge by engaging in a non-cooperative response to the perceived provocation or threat because they want to punish you. Which is why you're wasting your time trying to work it out. Even if they are texting or calling you or showing up at your house or work. Because even though they may be doing that, they're not seeking to resolve anything with you. They're seeking to relieve their uncontrollable feelings of anger which only subsides by watching you suffer and seeing you in pain. So all they're going to do is project everything onto you. They're going to blame you. And it will be biased and one-sided. It will unfairly deal with one side of the issue. And it will revolve around their emotions. So there is no way to work it out. Because they've done all of these things to you. They've caused you pain. And yet they're not interested in understanding your point of view. Because that's not important to them. They're only concerned about how you have rejected them. Because now they're battling these feelings of anger, irritation and annoyance. So in order for them to relieve these emotions, they have to punish you. Because they're at a very low level of consciousness and awareness. So they lack empathy and understanding. They can only see their side of things. They can only feel their pain. Because we cannot experience life in the same they cannot experience life in the same way that we do. They're at such a low level of consciousness where everything is all about them, which makes them vulnerable, sensitive, and insecure, because they don't want to accept these feelings about themselves. They're disconnected from their own emotions, so how could they ever put themselves in your shoes? And this is why you're never going to be able to move forward with them. Because they're never going to connect to themselves. Which means that they're always going to be this way. While empathy comes from self-awareness. From being in touch with your own feelings and knowing who you are. So their anger comes from them denying and suppressing themselves. From not wanting to know who they are. Which is why they're always on the defensive. They're always expecting or resisting criticism. Because they lack empathy, so they're unable to consider you. Which is why it doesn't matter how much you talk about it. There's no magic words that are going to help them to understand. Because they've experienced so much emotional and psychological trauma in their childhood. Which made them feel unsafe and helpless. So it affected the way in which their brain developed. And now they see the world differently, based on the experiences they had. Even though their experiences may have involved just one or two people in their childhood. So their brain is wired differently. Which leaves them unable to understand. Because they were subjected to so much trauma, drama and chaos. 
well, maybe you had a sheltered upbringing or you just weren't aware of what was happening at the time. But they were wise to it at a very young age. And that's how they're always two steps ahead of you to where it's like they've become these master manipulators, these skilled illusionists who always seem to have the upper hand. Because while you were living in a bubble all of your life, they were exposed to all sorts of things that shaped the perspective they have today. And yet there's also the emotional side to this as well, because they're very immature. While a mature, responsible person is not going to go around smearing your name or seek revenge, if they were emotionally mature, things would have turned out a lot differently because they would have known how to deal with rejection in a responsible way. The reality is that they are not the masterminds that they appear to be. They just fail to grasp basic problem solving, decision making, social skills, understanding that many of us may take as usual and customary. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.